Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Um, let me start with uh, one of my favorite quotes from Mario Vargas Llosa. Memory is a snare, pure and simple. It alters, it subtly rearranges the past to fit the present. And I think it does, actually. And then I like this picture from the old Pix archive, Westminster Bridge on the 14th of January, 1955. And in point of fact, I was at school not too far away from that very bridge, the school it's just at Westminster Abbey, in point of fact. Um, the Villa Rica volcano is seen at night in Pucon Town, Chile. This is a photograph from Reuters that caught my attention. And then uh, um, the real Banksy tweeted on May the 12th, millions of flower petals erupt from a volcano covering an entire village. Tremendous photograph from all the four volcano erupting flowers. Political reflections. Doug Mills of the New York Times tweeted President Obama boards Air Force One at Andrews Air Force Base for a trip to Camden, New Jersey. Um, and then uh, President Obama has got his own Twitter handle um, at POTUS, P O T U S. And his first tweet was, Hello Twitter, it's Barack. Really, six years in, they've finally given me my own account. Bill Clinton tweeted, uh, Welcome to Twitter, POTUS. One question, does that username stay with the office? Asking for a friend. And then President Obama, POTUS, Good question, Bill Clinton. The handle comes with the house. Know anyone interested in Flotus? And finally, Prince, I think, updated one second, Michelle, of this photograph of President Obama. ISIS obviously has seized Ramadi. This is Iraq's worst defeat in the war with the Islamic militants. And now, really, the battle is to defend the road to Baghdad, which is 70 miles distant from Ramadi. Shia militiamen will now attempt to block the road to Baghdad after ISIS fighters defeated elite units of the Iraqi armed forces. Just how elite they are is a bit of a mystery. Um, uh, units of the Iraqi armed forces and captured the city of Ramadi 70 miles west of the capital. The fall of Ramadi is the worst military disaster suffered by the Iraqi government since it lost the north of Iraq to an ISIS offensive almost a year ago. One local councillor in Ramadi described the situation as total collapse. Burnt bodies litter the streets and there are reports of massacres of policemen and tribesmen opposed to the self-proclaimed Islamic State. And, you know, besides the situation in Iraq, which is pretty dire, Iran is being stretched every which way from Yemen, Syria, where its intervention, I'm sure, is quite substantial, um, and Iraq. Mohammad Javad Zarif in his office in Tehran in, in, for an interview with Der Spiegel. And look at his desk, it's quite interesting, looking at people's desks actually. The level of distrust is huge, he said. Ken Roth, whoever was elected, please raise your hand. This is the photograph at Camp David um, a little while ago. Saudi Arabia is advertising for eight new executioners, usually done by public beheading. Advertising for eight new executioners, recruiting extra staff to carry out an increasing number of death sentences, usually done by public beheading. No special qualifications are needed for the jobs, whose main role is executing a judgment of death but also involved performing amputations on those convicted of lesser offences, the advert posted on the civil service jobs portal said. Stop the war, tweeted Saudi Arabia just carried out its 84th beheading this year. That was, I think, yesterday. Coming to the currency markets, well, when I started, the euro was at 130.04. It's dropped like a stone during just this little bit of the podcast. 
It's now at one twelve thirty five. I don't know what's happened and I'm not going to find out until I finish my podcast. But I will. Which means the dollar index has probably spiked considerably higher from 94.21 where it was this morning. Japanese yen 119.95. The Swissy when I looked last point nine two six three, but that's probably weaker. But the pound is hanging in there, 156.56. Um, the Australian dollars at 0.7993. India rupee 63.715, South Korean one ten ninety ninety six real back at three the figure, Egyptian pound seven point six three oh one, and the rand when I looked last was at eleven eighty eight twenty nine. I put up a three month chart of the dollar index. I remain a dollar bull, and I think you know the uh, economic slowdown we saw in the first quarter was very weather related, and once that uh, pans out, we should see some. Uh, we should see a, a, a rebound in the dollar, euro dollar, um, and this is a fair point made in a Reuters article I was reading. There's still remains a massive amount of euro short positions. And that's something that we have to consider at all times. But we're now at one twelve twenty four. Jonathan Ferro, Ferro TV, Euro market wrap yesterday said euro dollar drops from a three month high. And you can see where it got to. It's now at one twelve thirty. Investors also dumped Greek bonds on Monday. Greek two-year yield yesterday jumped through 24%. I like this. Bathtubs will be lit underneath to appear as if they're floating. Um, and this is photographer Jennifer Sabino, Bloomberg Business. Commodity markets, gold, last trading at around 12.22. I'll put up a one-year chart. I'm not one of those bulls about gold. Crude oil, uh, sixty dollars trading. It's running out of momentum, but you know it can be pushed up at any moment. I think it's a great short sale down to fifty. But I've been thinking that from about fifty-six, and it got all the way to sixty-three. But um, I'm keeping an eye on it now. Oliello travels, amazing view from the Fairmont Monte Carlo Bar Hotel, Monaco, and it really is. It looks pretty good. Wouldn't mind being there. Now, Frontier Markets, this photograph caught my attention from AFP, Agence France Press Photo. An Afghan girl carries her brother to a refugee camp on the outskirts of Herat in Afghanistan. Bonhams say interested in modern African art, posted a very interesting painting. I haven't followed up yet how he will. Burundi President Pierre Nkurunzinza yesterday sacked his defence and foreign ministers five days after surviving an attempted coup by generals opposed to his bid for a third term. Kurunzinza declined to give any reasons for the dismissals. The president does not have to explain. One of his spokesmen said the constitution gives him powers to do so. Um, AFP also took a photograph of, of him at that press conference on Sunday. I'll post that. And um, really rather surreal, but quite politically astute, cloaking yourself in the counter-terrorism overcoat has never done anyone any harm. And uh, I think in this case it's a very sort of real politique decision, and so far I think it's working in his favour. But I think you know, he's got to be very careful he doesn't overreach himself in his counter-terrorism operations, which of course are not counter-terrorism, but to counter anybody who's an opponent to him. Uh, time is Times uh, live tweeted lights to go out tonight. Escom. The South African oil share, meanwhile, is up 10.85%, um, just about 54,400. Got about 55,000 twice so far this year. Dollar Rand, I'll put up a six month chart, I think it heads over 12 again. The Egyptian pound is around the 763 level. The Egyptian stock market rallied a monster 6.5% yesterday. Uh, and uh, rallied 537 points. That was the biggest single day rally since July 2013. Um, best performing index among 93 gauges tracked by Bloomberg. And essentially, what they did, they postponed the implementation of the capital gains tax for two years to protect the competitiveness of the financial markets. Um, and citing cabinet smoke post spokesman Hossam al-Kawish. And that's an interesting decision and probably one that Nairobi might follow. 
There is no doubt that the news about the capital gains tax is moving the market. It was confusing a lot of people as to methodology for calculation, especially for important fund managers. He said Nigerian all share jumped 0.99% yesterday. It's up 3.41% uh, year to date. And of course, there was this outstanding rally on the news of President Buhari's um, uh, victory and peaceful sort of concession by good luck Jonathan, largely seen as deflating political risk in Nigeria very dramatically, which it did. Nevertheless, there are complexities in, our, in Nigeria, first of all, around the currency, for example. I mean, if I was President Buhari, I would cut hard, big, make a big cut, overcut, let the market then bring it back to fair value, but don't let that hang over you in, in the early days because it can always turn very, very nasty. Um, interesting data coming out of the Nigerian beer market is showing signs of a slowdown according to recent results from the country's major brewers. Um, anecdotal evidence suggests that the reason for this is that drinkers are having their purchasing power uh, fizzle out. Nigerian breweries 2015 first quarter revenue rose by just 1.3% year on year. Guinness uh, recorded a third quarter revenue 2% drop. Um, Slow growth, I mean slow, low single digits. So basically, average growth the market showed between 2001 and 2010 was between 8 and 9 percent. Last three years, it's been nowhere close. It's been between 1 and 2 percent, which is something to consider. The Ghana Stock Exchange is plus 3.32 percent here to date. Celestine Monger tweeted, not captured in Ghana's GDP, the value of El Anatsui's work, honoured today for a lifetime achievement of Venice Biennale, and it really is excellent stuff, pretty pricey now, out of reach, I'm afraid. Growth in GDP is expected to be 7.2% next year, says the IMF, that's very bullish. In 20, 2007 was the last time GDP growth at 7%, but we've had returned to that level since then. And I remember that period because the place was booming. Um, Nehu Yetu Kenya tweeted, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, Kenya's first president and prime minister, sworn in to the Latin post at Uru Gardens. Oh, attention. Kenya shilling when I walked in 96.10, now 96.50. I wrote that piece over the weekend, Central Bank of Kenya in delicate position over weak shilling. Uh, the link is on Rich Wrap-Ups and on the front page of the website if you can have a look. The Nairobi All Share fell 0.15% to a fresh 14-week low, but it remains up 2.817% so far this year. Nairobi NSE 20 fell 0.97%, so quite a big drop. It's now down 3.52% year-to-date and closed at 19-week lows, so pretty poor performance uh, all around. Um, I like this photograph, flamingos in Lake Bagoria, Baringa, and I've never been there actually, I really want to go. Aerial oblique photo, this is Baringa. Now, the Daily Mirror, which tends to run these stories, has run another story about the white widow, Samantha Luthwaite, saying that she's killed 400 people in reign of terror against the West. 32-year-old mother of four atrocities last month, slaughter of 148 by gunmen at a university in Kenya, say security chiefs, that's Garissa. One told the mirror in the Somalian capital, frequently bombed by al-Shabaab, this lady sits at the right hand of the leader directing attacks. She has been rapidly promoted through the ranks of Shabab after many of its leaders died in drone attacks. She has also launched a recruitment drive of teenagers and women as suicide bombers after bribing their desperate families with as little as £300. One London resident blew herself up at a hotel in the Somali capital Mogadishu in February, killing 25. Now, there's a lot of scepticism about this kind of reporting and whether she really exists or not. But, uh, you know, all I can tell you is what I observed at the time when Westgate happened, uh, um, and we'll get to that in a moment. And I wrote this piece about a week after Westgate happened. I'm just going to go through it verbatim. Westgate happened more than a week ago, and today there is no grand unified theory. There are competing narratives, and it is this potpourri of narratives which is leaving many of us uncertain. Earlier this week, I characterized it as a BP moment for Kenya. Kenya share of voice was at a level never experienced before. The world's media was camped on our doorstep. I found myself watching the live feed 
um, trawling eyewitness accounts because what happened was, you know, I was sitting here, my wife and kids had gone to Westgate that day, and uh, it, fortunately they came to collect me here, which is about seven minutes drive from Westgate, and then my daughter says to me, something's happening, and initially they thought there was a robbery or something, so the moment we got home I just locked on to Twitter and started watching what was being said in real time in particular. Um, I found myself watching the live feed, trawling eyewitness accounts, reading the Al Shabaab Twitter handles. Twitter knocked them down about four times, only for it to bounce back under a different handle with a small change. In fact, Al Shabaab, I think, live tweeted Westgate and shredded the Interior Secretary's bona fides because they practically rebutted him in real time. He'd say something something which you said on the handle and you go, wow, the latency of the responses leads me to place the author of the Twitter handles on the scene in Westgate for as yet undetermined time. So that's my first bit. Numerous eyewitness accounts at that time put a white woman at the scene and a number of those accounts give this woman a leadership role. Then this, that was a catalyst uh, for a tsunami of stories about Samantha Luthwaite also known as the White Widow, for she was the widow of the 7-7 seven, seven suicide bomber, Jermaine Lindsay. Lindsay blew himself up on a train traveling between King's Cross and Russell Square tube stations at 8.50 a.m. He killed 26 civilians in his suicide attack. Luthwaite was eight months pregnant with their second child, a daughter, at the time of his death, and their first child, a son, was 14 months old. Luthwaite reported um, her husband missing six days after the bombing, by telephoning a helpline set up for families of the victims, but denied prior knowledge of the attacks and said, I totally condemn and am horrified by the atrocities. I am the wife of Germaine Lindsay and never predicted or imagined that he was involved in such horrific activities. He was a loving husband and father and trying to come to terms with the rest of recent events. My whole world has fallen apart and my thoughts are with the families of the victims of this incomprehensible devastation, she said. Subsequently, she fell below the intelligence radar in 2011. She reappeared in Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa, and apparently Somalia. That's the background, and now let's jump to Westgate. As I scanned the Al-Shabaab tweets, I recall this one that Georgina Goodwin retweeted. Westgate, 14-hour standoff, relayed in 1,400 rounds of bullets and 140 characters of vengeance and still ongoing. Good morning, Kenya. Another read, here are two of the Mujahideen inside Westgate Mall, unruffled and strolling around the mall in such sang froid manner. I kept thinking to myself, sang froid, such an unusual word. It means coolness of mind, calmness, composure, kind of cold-bloodedness under pressure. And therefore... I'm putting her, because that's the kind of word which her father was part of the army, that you know from the army, sang for her, something you'd think would be the ultimate, wouldn't it? You know, someone who's permanently cool, nothing phases them out. Um, I'm putting her at the scene, and I think she live tweeted from there, from a yet undetermined period. There was another tweet from her saying, I'm off, and then, you know, we subsequently learned there are like tunnels and all kinds of things below. Um, I'll put up an image that the Daily Mirror published, Kenya Mall Massacre, World's Most Wanted Woman. Westgate, uh, the day the mattresses were meant to be burning, which was 602 days ago. I took a photograph from um, uh, uh, CNBC Africa's 19th floor, and another photograph of Westgate up from 1,982 days ago when the Christmas lights were on. The IFC said they'll acquire a stake in Kenya Re, partly owned reinsurer Zep Re. So um, that's worth keeping an eye on. The entry of IFC is, however, has, however, not been taken kindly by Kenya Re. Um, so let's have a look at that. The activity was elevated, the security exchange yesterday uh, nearly clocked a billion shillings of activity, but it was about 960 million. NSC 20 fell very sharply. Uh, Safaricom actually rebounded to 0.9174% to close at 1650. It's up 17.43% here to date, 5.714% below a record high, and I think eventually headed to 20. Uh, Diamond Trust, very active, uh, traded um, how many shares? Let me check. Traded 1.496 million shares, which is 0.618% of its shares. Um, it's only up. 
0.42% in 2015, but they've outlined an interesting geographical expansion program which would include Madagascar and DR Congo. KCB unclosed the 58 centum announced that they had received CMA approval for the public listing of 6 billion shillings of bonds, which are about an issue. And big news for EABL, actually. The Alcoholic Drinks Control Amendment Bill 2015 was signed into law on Friday, setting the excise duty cut tax cut remission at 90% from the current 50% for beers manufactured using at least 75% locally sourced sorghum, millet or cassava. This will rehabilitate senators, the Senator Keg brand, uh, which had been decimated. Welcome news for sorghum farmers and the entire infrastructure which supported Senator. Found only 0.66%. Um, I would have thought it was worth a bit more. Ever Ready has been uh, on, on the rise. They're the ones who are moving from making batteries into real estate and co-manufacturing with some others. Uh, ran in 8.33% yesterday. Once again, thank you for stopping by. I am grateful. I wish you a great week.